Hello everyone, Cindy here with Monarch Mom DIY. Thank you so much for joining me today on my channel where I love to create beautiful home decor on a budget and how to teach you to do the same. Today's video is a little bit different as it is one of my paper crafting tutorials. I'm gonna show you how I make this tri-fold folio planner. And with all that being said, let's get crafting. So this video was requested by a lot of you who saw me do this on a live on Facebook. We're gonna use all these supplies here and I will include a list of the supplies and links in the description of the video. So let's do a flip through of this six inch by nine inch tri-fold planner folio. Here in the inside left, you've got two stacked pockets. In the middle, I have a pocket here that you can slide in a calendar, and on the right, a pocket that you can slide in a junior legal notepad. So you can make these in really any size you want. This is just a size that fits those junior pads. So the first thing that you're going to need to build this folio is three pieces of medium weight chipboard that measure six inches by nine inches. Because this is thicker, I do score it or cut it a few times and then flip it over to cut from the other side. And that is how I can get through the thicker chipboard. And one note, I do have one of these Fiskars blades that I only use for chipboard. I have the letters CB on it so that I'm not ruining sharp blades all the time. There's my two pieces. Now I have a third piece that's already cut at six inches and I'm just gonna trim it down to nine inches, flip it over and cut it again from the other side to get my third piece that I need. Now for the spines for this, you will need two more pieces of chipboard that measure one inch by nine inch. So I have this scrap here. I never throw away my chipboard because you never know when you'll need a smaller piece, even that little square that I just cut off. And now that this is at nine inches, I will cut two one inch pieces for my spines. And here are the pieces then that I need, my three pieces that are six by nine and my two pieces that are one by nine. Next, I need two pieces of cardstock cut at 11 by 12. So basically I'm taking two 12 by 12 sheets of a pretty heavy weight craft cardstock and I'm cutting one inch off of the height of each of these pieces. So when we set them in front of us, we've got 11 inches going up and down and 12 inches across. Now I'm taking a quarter inch score tape and I'm putting one strip of that right on the edge of one of my pieces of cardstock, trim any extra. Once I burnish that down so the adhesive gets into the fibers of the paper, I'm gonna peel off the backing and I'm gonna attach these two pieces of cardstock simply by overlapping them on that quarter inch score tape. So line it up burnish it down, you can flip it over and burnish it again to make sure we have this attached and one long piece. Now I'm gonna use a scoreboard for this, but if you don't have one, you could definitely use a ruler and do this with a pencil. I'm gonna score it one inch on a short side and then also on a long side of my large piece of paper here now that we're going to wrap our chipboard folio with. So here I went one inch, and because my sheet is extra long, I just flipped it around, and now I'm doing the one inch on the other side there of my scoreboard. So here you can see this gives you a nice guideline in the corner where we will then start laying down our chipboard. It just helps you be able to line everything up nicely and have everything lined up when you're ready to stick it down. So this is an idea. You're gonna have little gussets in between your pieces. And I'm gonna use now a one inch score tape because it covers 
a lot of territory, but you could also even use wet glue for this if you'd like. It's definitely just a personal preference. So I'm taking the score tape and I'm going around the perimeter of each of my three pieces, then switching to a one quarter inch score tape. I'm gonna do three strips of this down each of my two spine pieces. Now that we have the score tape in place, we'll take our bone folder and we're just burnishing all of that score tape, again, to get the adhesive into the fibers of the chipboard so that our book will be really secure. Now, coming to one of the large pieces, I'm then taking my adhesive tape runner and I'm filling in that space in the middle. This is to eliminate getting any air bubbles between our chipboard and the cardstock. So now using those two lines, the horizontal and vertical in that corner as a reference, I'm gonna start by laying down one of my six by nine inch pieces. Then taking the backing off of one of my spines, I'm using this little shim that I made. Basically it's two thicknesses of the chipboard that I glued together. Then coming in with the runner again, now I'm doing my middle six inch by nine inch piece filling in with the runner and taking the backing off of the score tape. You can see I've got that shim in there again to help me get uniform spacing between all of my pieces. Now our second spine piece will go in and then we'll come back with our third and final six inch by nine inch piece. Now that all five of our pieces are down, I'm flipping over the entire project and burnishing really well with my bone folder. Then I'm going to go across those edges right up to the chipboard where we didn't already use the scoreboard to do so. I'm just going around now to kind of break up the fibers of the paper. This is going to help us be able to fold that over. Now we did have a little bit of extra on this right hand side, so I'm just trimming that to one inch so we have a uniform one inch margin all the way around our chipboard. Now you can see I'm training the paper even more to be able to go over the chipboard, folding it and then pressing in with the edge of my bone folder against the top of the chipboard, doing that going all the way around. Now taking a 3 8 inch score tape, I am going around all four outside edges of our cardstock. You'll notice that I'm not going all the way to the corners because we will be cutting angles from the corners to allow us to wrap better. Once you have that down, go ahead and burnish it again to make sure those fibers again get into the paper so that the adhesive will be super strong. So here I'm gonna leave a little bit of gap there at the corner. I'm not cutting all the way to the corner of the chipboard. And I'm just cutting some angled corners on our cardstock. Now I'm taking that same score tape and I'm going now across or around the outside edges of my chipboard. You can see when I get to the little gaps, I am pressing the score tape down into the gaps so that that adhesive will get down inside as well. Go ahead and go all the way around the rectangle, large rectangle of chipboard pieces, laying it down and making sure it gets into the gaps. Then when I come back to burnish, I'm even using my bone folder to make sure I go down into those gaps as well. Next, I'm just gonna go around one more time and train my paper, folding it over before I go back and now re remove 
the backing to my score tape. I'm gonna do one of my long sides first, pressing it down at the middle and then going out to the sides, using the bone folder to press it down really well, even into the gaps. Then I flip it around and I do the other long side, doing the exact same thing, getting that paper trained over, nice and tight against the chipboard. Once we have the two long sides done, we'll do the exact same thing on our two short sides. I am kind of pressing in that little bit of corner just to make sure the corners of our chipboard are covered by the cardstock. Now that we have our chipboard completely wrapped on the outside, I'm taking my bone folder, just don't take a sharp side of your bone folder, and I'm just pressing in those creases on the spine and training our book to fold like so. Now I'm gonna take two pieces of eight and a half by 11 craft card stock, and I'm gonna cut one inch off of the width of that. The eight and a half side will be going uh, top to bottom and we're going to use these two pieces now to cover the inside so that we're not seeing the chipboard again you can use score tape of your preferred size or width you can use an adhesive tape runner you could use wet glue if you'd like I'm just using this because it's quick and simple so I did that to both pieces of the cardstock and then I'm also going to reinforce with a couple strips of score tape the two spine pieces, just so I make sure that the cardstock is stuck down really well to the spines and we don't get any bubbles. So burnishing with our bone folder, I'm going to remove the backing from the left hand spine and I'm gonna take one of my pieces here of eight and a half by 10, burnish that score tape I'm also going to add in between the score tape strips some of my adhesive runner. Now I measured on my cover where the middle point was. I have a couple little pencil marks and that's where I'm going to line up this first piece of cardstock right in the middle of my project at about 10 and a quarter inches, I believe it was. So once we have all the adhesive exposed, I'm finding those two pencil marks, lining it up at the top and the bottom, trying to get an even margin going all the way around. Once I have that first one down, the second one will go just the same. Instead of overlapping the cardstock though, like we did at the beginning, I'm just gonna butt this second piece up right to the edge of the first piece. and burnish all of that cardstock down really well with the bone folder. We wanna make sure our cover is really nice and secure before we start adding other decorations to it. You do need to take your bone folder again and crease in the spines again, the little places where it's going to bend. And just take your time with this. You don't want to crack your cardstock on either side, the front or the back. So definitely take your time with this step to make sure everything is secure and able to bend. You want all your flaps to be able to open and close. I did come back to the outside and just with my bone folder again, press that down. If you're stopping by my channel for the first time today, welcome. I'm so glad that you found me. I hope you like what you see and you'll consider sticking around by hitting that subscribe button. If you are a returning viewer or subscriber, thank you so much for your continued support of my channel. 
Now that the base of our folio is made, we're going to get to decorating it with six pieces of solid cardstock cut at five and seven eighths inch by eight and three quarter inch. So just slightly smaller than the size of the chipboard at six by nine that we started with. You will need, like I said, six pieces of this. Oops, one I didn't quite cut at the right length. Get that fixed up. And then you're going to need three pieces of different patterned cardstock at five and five eighths by eight and a half. So again, just a little bit smaller than the cardstock we just cut so that we can mat it like this and have that little bit of edge going around. Now I said three because there's only three panels of the six in our folio that are gonna be full sheets like this. So I love to use paper collections from Echo Park for these projects because all the papers and journal cards and stickers all coordinate together. So I will be sure to put a link for this one that I'm using in the description as well. Next, we'll need a piece of cardstock at five and seven eighths by about six or six and a half. This is gonna be one of our pockets. And then another one with a different pattern, five and seven eighths by six and a half. Again, this will be our other pocket for either our calendar or our junior size legal notepad. Next, these two pieces at five and seven eighths by three and a half, we're gonna cut one. These two pieces are going to be the stacked pockets that will be on the inside left of our folio. So we're cutting them the exact width of the cream colored cardstock, and we're just gonna cut them at slightly different um, depths. This one is going to be five and seven eighths by four inches. Now that I have all my pieces cut, I'm going to mat or use my adhesive runner and mount my large rectangle of pattern cardstock onto the cream colored cardstock. I'm going to do that for all three of my large panels. Opening my folio all the way out flat, I'm going to use my adhesive runner again. And this is the design that I chose that I want for the very front cover of my folio. So I'm just going to center that as best I can onto the front panel of the folio. Press that down really well. Now this one is going to be the very back cover of our folio right in the middle when it's all folded up. So we're gonna get both of those attached first before we move on to the rest of our assembly. Now our third full panel is gonna go on this inside right flap, but first we need to add our magnets. So these are magnetic discs. They come in different sizes. I'm using larger ones on this project. You just wanna match up a plus and a minus, and you could have just used one, but I decided to use two sets, one at the top and one at the bottom. So these do have a little bit of adhesive on them. I want them to be hidden, which is why I'm attaching them before I put the decorative card stock on. So I'm lining it up on my mat, and I'm kind of placing the magnet about an inch up and an inch in. The, so there are two magnets stacked on top of each other right now. The minus magnet is on the bottom. That's what we're attaching to this side. And now I'm peeling the sticker off of the positive magnet. And then we're going to cl close our folio, get it all lined up, and press that adhesive down so that then when we open up our folio, we've got two sets of magnets that are perfectly lined up with each other. So now I can take that third piece and apply it with adhesive runner 
to cover up the magnets on that right flap. So I'm gonna lay it as flat as I can and get that pressed down nice and centered. I am going to use some art glitter glue around the magnets so that I can really press the paper down so that those magnets stay nice and covered and hidden. Next, we're going to assemble our two pockets for our calendar and our legal notepad, junior legal notepad. So you can see I'm using that art glitter glue and I'm just doing a thin bead on the sides and the bottom of the patterned cardstock, lining that up perfectly on the left and right and bottom sides of the plain cardstock. I'm gonna do the same thing with my second piece and then we'll have these pockets. We'll let them sit for a minute to make sure that the glue is completely dry. Now with our folio completely open and flat, I'm gonna take one of the pocket pages we just made and apply adhesive runner to the back and then center this on the far right panel of the inside of our folio. This is where I'm choosing to put the junior size legal notepad. Then we're gonna do the same thing with our other pocket page we made and put this one right in the middle. This is where I'm choosing to put my spiral calendar. Now I will put a link to the Etsy shop where I downloaded the blank calendars. And then I just used a machine we have at church. It's a really old book binding machine to spiral bound mine, but you can do it at office supply stores or you can even use staples. Now I'm taking a scrap of the cardstock. I'm cutting a five inch wide piece. I'm going to just use this to decorate the top of my junior legal pad before I add it to my folio. Just put some adhesive there and then press down that cardstock, kind of wrap it around, bending it down as you go. You can use your bone folder to make sure it's nice and snug there on the top edge and also on the back. I don't worry about cutting that excess off the back. I just put some adhesive on it and stick it down to the back of the cardboard there and I feel like it's just extra reinforcement. Once you have that on there, then you can take just the cardboard backing and slide that into your pocket. It is pretty snug, which I actually like because then I don't have to worry about the notepad slipping out. But I do like it because then I can change out the notepad when I'm done with it. Same thing with my calendar. I just, when I bound it, I put a thin uh, piece of chipboard on the back of it so I can slide it in and out of that pocket as well. And our folio is coming along. We just have one more panel that we need to finish up. So our little stacked pocket, I accidentally used one of my pieces for something else, but I have those two pieces that are five and seven eighths inches wide and then about three and a half or four inches tall. So I'm going to stack these on top of each other after I take this little circle punch and cut out a little notch on both of my little pocket pieces. Now I want them to be stacked. So you can see I have that top one kind of tucked behind the bottom one. I want the notch to have the decorative paper. So I'm marking with my pencil where I need to glue this one. Now the top pocket, I'm only going to put glue on the left and right sides because essentially anything that goes into this pocket we want it to be able to go all the way down to the bottom. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So right now this is glued just on the left and the right. Then the bottom piece, which will go at the bottom there of our pocket page, I'm gonna do the left, the bottom, and the right because now we wanna seal up the bottom of our pockets. So once I have that thin bead of our glitter glue, we'll put this down at the bottom of our cream cardstock, and now we've built our stacked pockets. So the stacked pockets are gonna go here, but I'm gonna let them dry before I 
attach them down. Now I'm taking some of the decorative elements from the paper collection. I'm choosing this large journal card. It's gonna go on the front cover of my book. And then I'm just cutting some other cardstock slightly larger to matte behind it. I'm gonna do this dark green. Then I'm gonna come back in with our cream colored cardstock, cutting my rectangle now even just a tiny bit larger. I think the journal card was four by six. So then I did four and a quarter by six and a quarter, and then the cream was four and a half by six and a half. And now I'm just going to mat those all on top of each other to put this decorative card on the front of my folio. Now that we have our front decorated and the glue on our pockets are completely dry, we will then take our adhesive runner one more time and we're going to attach now our page with our stacked pockets onto the inside left flap of our folio. I'm putting a little extra adhesive where the magnets are gonna be, and then I am going to also add glue around the magnets like I did earlier. One other addition I decided to add to my folio is this adhesive pen loop. I got these on Amazon. You can stick them anywhere. I'm gonna stick it on the front of my calendar pocket and then I can attach a pen in there and keep it in there. Thanks again so much for joining me today. Please let me know in the comments what you thought about this project if you wanna see more paper crafting tutorials and we'll see you next time. Take care.